All right, ladies and dudes, welcome to this episode of uh, the Jeremy McDonald Parkinson's uh, channel, whatever you want to call it. Today we're going to talk about some of the, the 22 different symptoms according to the American Parkinson's Disease Association, the 22 symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Everybody knows the tremor, which is, I'll just uh, go out on a limb and I'll say everybody kind of associates that with a tremor. Uh, those when you're on your medicine you don't really shake too much and then the stooped posture those are things that people really recognize as parkinson's i remember watching a video of myself before i was diagnosed and my face wasn't moving i was moving real like kind of like an old man i thought i got parkinson's disease my wife's like no you don't well i guess I, I did so before we get to that i would just like to let you know that i've got a facebook page and an instagram i'll put the links in the description below as long along with the links to this uh these the symptoms list Okay, so 22 symptoms, only six of them are motor uh, related. The tremor, obviously, is the first one everybody knows. Rigidity, this is one of the most troubling ones for me. It's a bug on my leg, sorry. When you, when you can't move, you feel stiff. My, my wife says I look like the Tin Man. I, I don't, I, I like, people say I look like a robot walking. Just no flexibility. That's, that's no way to live, let me tell you. And then, of course, bradykinesis, which I believe actually means slow movement, which is when you, when uh, people at work would like call me slow mo because I would, I would go to reach for a glass of water and I would be like this, and I'd screw it on slowly, and then that's bradykinesis. And people thought I was on drugs. Like, why are you moving so slow? I can't help it. I'm moving as fast as I can. God damn it. Vocal symptoms. A lot of times, uh, Parkinson's symptoms, I mean, you think of, uh, I kind of think of Ozzy Osbourne. He kind of has that, he's got Parkinson's. He's kind of that low, kind of slurry, kind of slightly drunk sound. It's not, I mean, maybe with Ozzy it was drunk sometimes, but Michael J. Fox has that kind of, that slur. Now, I should also mention that not everybody gets all these symptoms. Some people, I guess if you've had the disease for 30 years, you're going to get pretty much most of them, but... The, the uh, Parkinson's experience is so tailored, made different to each person that it's it can be tricky to diagnose. Uh, posture instability. This is where you see, sometimes you see an old man kind of leaned over. Or maybe, for me, I, I my neck was stiff. I was always, I, like would, I would stand up really straight, but it was like I was too straight. And then walking and gait disturbances, which involve... Uh, dragging your feet that was one of the early symptoms for, for me walking was like I just remember feeling like I couldn't move it was I would see people like we would do these exercises at work where you flex your hand back and forth before we'd start up I couldn't do it I would, I would look at my hand like my hand's not moving same thing with my walk my I my legs were stiff and my arms didn't swing. I mean, that's one of the things, too. You, you should see your arms swinging when you, when you walk. That was not happening for me. All right, that's the six motor symptoms. But I, what I would really like to talk about this week is the non-motor symptoms. There's 16. 16 non-motor symptoms involved in Parkinson's, at least according to the APDA, American Parkinson's Disease Association. First of all, cognitive changes. Slow thinking is one way to put it. I remember... Having that was a scary symptom for me because I didn't understand why my brain had slowed down. I, I was like to troubleshoot or problem solve was like it was really difficult. It'd be like trying to work like I put a jigsaw puzzle together when you the first thing time you wake up in the morning after a two hour sleep. You would be you'd be terrible at it. I think of those game, those Survivor on so the Survivor TV show when they they starve and overwork those people, leave them on a beach, and then they expect them to solve a puzzle. Well, your brain just kind of locks up. That was. That was a scary one for me, i got to be honest with you. Depression, oh man, oh my God. I got hit with depression so hard pre-diagnosis. And I should mention a lot of these symptoms will predate your diagnosis sometimes by as much as a decade. I can look back and see some of those symptoms I had going on quite a bit longer than my initial like year or so waiting for a diagnosis. Depression, just crushing depression, like no hope, end of the world, blackout, don't get out of bed stuff like just debilitating depression clinical depression i think is what they call it next is anxiety 
I remember having panic attacks. I mean, when I was younger, I didn't realize at the time what they were, but they were panic attacks, like anxiety attacks. Uh, they're all, it's, I mean, I remember the first time I really had a name for it was watching The Sopranos. If you've seen the first episode of The Sopranos, the show gets kicked off with Tony having an anxiety attack. Well, Tony Soprano made it cool, but it wasn't cool. Just freezing up, panicking for no reason, pacing the, pacing the floor, just not able to settle my brain down. As you know, Parkinson's is a brain disease, and so you're, when your brain goes screwy, you just, the world turns upside down and you don't have the, the skills to cope with it, or the mental tools to cope with it. Disturbance and sense of smell. This is one I can't really relate to. I have a pretty good sense of smell. Like, I'm out here on my deck, I can smell the, the fall, the leaves kind of moldering in the, in the, in the uh, woods that, like, that I'm looking at, and the smell of the wet, wet, wet grass. But that's that's a big that's a big one for someone that some people and I remember I've talked to some people that say like uh, food and and even uh, drinks just don't they're not appealing anymore I just I can't taste them. Eye and vision issues. Now I've pre-diagnosis I suspected something was going on and so I had like a, like an eye exam at my doctor. They they I guess they they blew some air into it and they tested it and they actually did like a. A really thorough exam of my eyes. At that point, I had no Parkinson's-related uh, vision issues. I will say this. I don't know if it's old age or just uh, Parkinson's, but at night, my, my, my sense of judging distance is pretty... I wouldn't say it's bad, but I feel like I'm in a video game. It's kind of uncomfortable, so I generally do not drive at night unless absolutely necessary. Fatigue. You want to talk about crushing fatigue like you've never experienced. Parkinson's will do it to you. Just bone-numbing fatigue. Like you've got like 10-pound weights on each leg and arms and your arms and like like weight on your head. Just you feel like you're in one of those one of those uh weighted suits. Or you feel like you have a weighted blanket on you. Just terrible, terrible fatigue. But I mean, I, I thought I was getting older. I thought, well, I'm going to be, I was at that time, I think it was 36, getting ready to turn 37. I was like, everybody said, well, you're getting old. It's like, well, I'm only 36. Why do I feel like I'm 96? Got some more here. Digestive issues. Constipation is one thing I have not struggled with, but I hear a lot of people do have constipation, constipation issues, which of course can affect the way your medicine is absorbed. If you're, if you're constipated, you're not going to be absorb, be able to absorb your medication as, as quickly. Uh, that's fortunately one I don't, I don't deal with. Lightheadedness. Okay, occasionally I'll get this. I think it's related to blood pressure. Like if you stand up too quickly, you can be, you can get lightheaded. I got to tell you, I don't get down the floor that much. So, because <laughs> I can't get off to the floor when I'm on the floor. So, I guess that one doesn't really apply to me. But I know I know the feeling. There's been times I've got I've felt a little lightheaded, but it's not really an issue. Pain. Well, this goes hand in, in hand in glove with uh, with fatigue. It hurts to move because you, it takes so much uh, energy to move. So therefore, you're expending so much energy to move. So you're eventually your muscles get cramped and worn out because you're. It's like you need. It's like you're like you're a, like a tin man needs oil. That's my wife always said. Or like a, like a car engine with no oil in it. It's it's going to lock up, which is what, what happens and creates a lot of pain. So that's probably underreported in Parkinson's. This is actually a pretty good one here. Personality changes. Now, I, I remember noticing I was I was started getting really dark and withdrawn. I used to be pretty outgoing, class clown, kind of uh, always uh, trying to mix things up in group settings because I, I would just I had I had to laugh. I was always a like the yeah you know, the clown. But I just remember people saying, "Why are you why are you so you're so dark and moody now?" So that was related to Parkinson's. Uh, I'm sure other people have different issues. Um, Leave me, leave me a, a comment and let me know if you've had any personality changes. Okay, psychosis. Fortunately, I've, I've not had this one yet. I think a lot of this can be medication-related, but there can be, I think it's called Lewy body dementia. That's what Robin Williams had before he passed. You just, you just lose touch with reality and you get paranoid and just out of it. Keep my fingers crossed on that one. Okay, sexual issues. This one nobody likes to talk about. I'm a young, I mean, I'm not a young man, but uh, 
unfortunately, that hasn't really been a, a big issue for me. But uh, sometimes people, I guess men especially, can well, of course, men can have trouble getting an erection. I, you're a woman and you're getting an erection. Well, that's a, I don't want to I don't want to touch that topic. Uh, yeah, sexual issues. I got to tell you, Michael J. Fox uh, nailed it pretty good when he said, "You got to figure out who's going to be the agent of motion." And sometimes you'll come up with with moves that you can't replicate. Like your wife might be like, or your or your husband might be like. Hey, nice. Do that again. Like I can't. I literally can't do that again. I, I couldn't control my muscles. So that's. I mean, that that kind of gets into the um, self-esteem category. Um. So I would say there's been there's been some of that, but not 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 really performance related. But I'm only 47. I guess uh, I guess I still got enough testosterone and whatever to keep it pumping. Sleep problems. Well, this is easy. If if, you, if your hands are shaking and your body hurts, you can't go to sleep. But there's also something called, um, as I, I don't know what it's called, acting out in your dreams, where basically you will have, like, I can describe it as, you'll be mad in your dreams, or you'll be upset in your dreams, and you'll wake up crying, or, or like, punch in the air, that's happened. It used to happen a lot, not so much now, I don't know if it's a medication thing, or just my symptoms have changed over the years. I mean, it happened last week, but by and large, I don't really have that, that kind of acting out of dreams. Okay, thought we were done. We still got three more to go. Sweating. This one, uh, sweating is kind of, it definitely can come and go. I've talked to my good friend Jennifer about this and some other some other people. And uh, sweating usually happens when my medicine's kicking in. For whatever reason, I just start to sweat. Or sometimes when my medicine just, when it drops off real quick, I can just start sweating. I, I can't really explain it, but I remember I remember pre-diagnosis, I remember watching a football game and just getting a chill for no reason. And it wasn't because it was a good game, because it was the St. Louis Rams before they, lost, before they left town. And it was the worst football you've ever seen. So maybe it was the chills from just a horrible football, but I, I don't think so. Urinary issues, the urgent need to pee. Got to be honest with you, this one has hit me a few times, and I'm like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, and you try to make it to the toilet in time, and... When you're off, uh, or even when you're on, sometimes it can be hard to get your drawers off. So, uh, And then weight loss. I do remember losing a lot of weight pre-diagnosis, but I think it was from depression. But that, once again, it's tied in with that. And then also, sometimes later on in the disease, you can't eat protein as much, so you don't eat like you should, and you lose weight, which I've always said I'd rather be 10 pounds overweight than 10 pounds underweight, especially with Parkinson's, because you just just don't know when you're going to get sick and not be able to eat. All right, this is where you guys come in. You can leave me comments. Tell me about what symptoms you have that are the most bothersome. Maybe what, like your pre-diagnosis symptoms that were the most troubling. It's weird because everybody with Parkinson's has a different version of it. Like I said, some people get constipation, lightheadedness, those things I haven't really dealt with, sexual issues. Um, but I have dealt with pain, sleep, dis sleep problems, personality changes. I gotta tell you, there's there's probably I could list on one hand the amount of people in this world that I really, really, really can't stand. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Not e not even. Well, they probably know who they are if they're watching this. They, I don't know if they do, but I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. It's not fun. It's 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 an ever changing, ever morphing disease. So that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Till next time, peace and love from the chilly autumn city of St. Louis.